What's up everybody, how's it going? It's Burke, aka Dan's Way here, and this is part two of my How I Make My Video series. So in part one, we discussed all of the hardware that I use, uh, how I get my PS4 footage, how I get my PC footage, and all that kind of stuff. This part is gonna be dedicated to the editing process, which is something I've talked about a lot, but I've never actually shown you guys what it looks like while I'm editing, uh, why I do it, how I do it, what am I looking for, and how do I go from the, the raw footage that comes in from the PS4 and the PC, to the videos that you guys watch on the channel. So without much further ado, let's get into it and talk about editing. What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome to this special video where I'll be showing you guys my editing process in the hopes that it might give some more insight into how I do things on the channel and that it might be helpful. So uh, the idea here is not to make this some kind of tutorial. Uh, everyone will, will do their content differently, but this is just to, to see how I do things. And let's just get straight into it and talk about what I do during my editing process. Okay, so the first thing I will talk about before I actually get into the editing is something that I do before that process. So I've recorded my video uh, using either the Elgato or the PC, so NVIDIA Shadowplay, but I also have a commentary track. I always record the commentary track using Audacity, which is something I showed in part one of this series. So once I'm done, I end up with a commentary file on Audacity. Now, before I actually export this, there's a few things that I do to it to, to enhance the quality a little bit. And this is just something that I Googled. So for people doing voiceover work, uh, radio work, podcast stuff, what are they doing to their files in order to make them sound a little bit better and a little bit more professional? The first thing I do is noise removal. Uh, noise removal can be anything from like, I don't know, your PlayStation humming in the background. Um, if you've got some kind of fan running or AC running, that can be in the background. Um, sometimes you can have a slight technical issue where there's a little bit of electrical interference and you get a little bit of buzzing going on. So what you can do is kind of single out and isolate whatever that noise is. And Audacity has a way to clear out all of that noise from your recording. So that's the first thing I do in order to clean up my recording. Then once I'm done with that, there's, uh, there's three things that I do. And again, this is just stuff that I Googled. I watched some videos on it and it seems to work for me, like to my own ears, that it sounds better than the raw recording does. And this is something that I've always gone with. I'm by no means like a, an audio expert or anything like that. So the first thing I do is apply the, the compressor plugin or tool or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I apply that to the entire track. Uh, once I'm done with that, then I apply some equalizer as well. So uh, I apply some bass boost and I apply some treble boost. Now Audacity's um, default settings I find are a bit too high and it sounds a bit kind of too extreme. So I tend to pull the sliders to half of what the default setting is and I apply those two as well. And the final thing, if I need it, I normalize it as well. Once that process is done, then I export it as a WAV file as well. So I, I retain like the, the higher quality uh, codec. I don't use an MP3. So I export it as a WAV file and that is a file that I import into Premiere Pro when I wanna do my editing. So that's like a, a little post-processing that I do on my commentary. Maybe you guys got some more tips uh, to make it sound even better, I don't know, but this kind of simple process is something that I've used for years and people have always been happy with the quality of the audio that comes out of my videos. Despite the fact that I'm not really using a studio microphone, I'm just using a, a clip-on microphone called the ModMic 5.0, which you would have seen in part one, I hope. So that's like a little audio before we get into the actual editing. So I am using Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, I have been using this since 2014. So before this, I was using a bit more uh, simple slash amateur video editing software. I think uh, Cyberlink Power Director was one of the first I ever used. And I think even before that, I was using something called VideoPad. So I've come a long way in that sense. But I would recommend to anyone that's, that's trying to make YouTube content, uh, even if your, your edits are very simple, like you don't actually need a, a very powerful editing program to do it, I would just train myself in how to use it because... Premiere Pro was one of the most transferable skills I ever learned as a YouTuber. So before I ever got into the world of filmmaking and media and all that kind of stuff, I was already playing around with Premiere Pro and learning how to use it. And it was through uh, my usage of Premiere Pro and getting better at it that I was able to get some jobs in the industry that were helping me to, to earn an income just because I had mastered certain elements of Premiere Pro well enough to work on a professional level. So I would definitely recommend to work with the most complex and uh, high level editing software that you can afford. So I've just got the Adobe Premiere Pro uh, like official software thing from Adobe. I don't have the entire Adobe suite or anything like that. 
Uh, it's not too bad for someone doing YouTube professionally that's earning an income from their usage of Premiere Pro. Uh, $19.99 a month really isn't that big an expense, so I'm happy to use it. And in general, I've always been very happy with Premiere Pro, and I'm going to be continuing to use it for a long time to come, I think. So let's get into it. We will start with PC recording. And here you're going to notice that we have this, the, the blue chunk belongs to the, the actual PC recording. So this was done through NVIDIA Shadowplay. Uh, this is something that I've used for a very long time. It's a very reliable software, never had any major issues with it, and it records with pretty nice quality and doesn't have much of an effect on your computer's performance. So what I tend to do is I've got my, um, let me split this up. So what I've got here is obviously my video here which I'll expand a little bit. I've got my video, uh, I've got my audio track for the actual game, and then here I've got my commentary track. So in your settings, you can split it up so that you have a separate commentary track by the time you're finished. Now, what you'll notice is that there's a, a green track underneath as well. And this is basically the, the commentary track that I record using Audacity. So whatever recording I do, whether it's on the Elgato or whether it's on the PC, uh, I will always use Audacity. It's like my main... Um, commentary recording software because I think it has it provides the best quality it has the most flexibility with options and it's quite easy to do some post-processing on the commentary once you're done so that's why you're going to see two tracks here the reason also we've got two tracks is just so that I have a backup so let's say something goes wrong with audacity and for some reason it's corrupted and this file has disappeared then I have my backup here and vice versa so it's always nice to have a double backup of your commentary because losing commentary or having corrupted commentary is pretty much one of the most annoying things because if something's happened to your commentary and you're just left with your video and your game audio, then it's, it's just frustrating because most of the time trying to re-record the commentary that you've recorded before over the top, it, it's just not the same. Like most of the time you don't have the same feeling, you don't have the same kind of reaction. Um, let's say you take pauses in the game where you're talking about things, you get the timing wrong and all that kind of stuff. So basically, uh, nine times out of ten, if something goes wrong with my commentary, I have to delete the entire thing and I have to record the entire session again. So for that reason, uh, I've, I try to be very careful with commentary and make sure I've always got uh, two tracks for commentary so that I've got a backup. Okay, so that is the explanation of what the different tracks are here. And the first thing you'll notice is obviously the these two tracks here are not synced. So I'm going to be using the green one for my actual like editing and output. But what I first of all do is I um, obviously make sure that they're they're in sync, and then I can delete the upper track. Obviously, this isn't too difficult. You just got to zoom in a bit and just make sure that the waveforms are matching here. And once they're matching, I mean, if they're like a millisecond off, no one's going to notice that. But once they're matching like this, I can just literally kind of lift it onto here and then you're done. So the blue one is removed and I just have my like master commentary track. I have the game audio and I have my video. And this is basically the ingredients that I need in order to start editing. So the reason why I don't blend them into one track, because a lot of, um, a lot of recording softwares can do that for you. The reason I don't have uh, a blended track is because when I do want to edit, let's say um, I'm reading something, I fluff something up, I want to remove something, or you know I make a noise during a cutscene, etc. If the commentary and the game audio is already blended together, then I can't extract the two from each other. So for me personally, it's a bad idea. Uh, when you're streaming, obviously that doesn't matter as much because it's all live and there's not too much you can do about that. But if you're doing pre-recorded content like I am, then it, it's definitely not a good idea to record your commentary and your game audio as a single file because you just will not be able to extract uh, the bits that you need. You can't move things around. Uh, you can't take out bits that you want to take out, etc. And once you're, you're done watching the video, it will be very, very clear why that's not a good idea for the kind of content that I'm making. So when it comes to the editing itself, um, I kind of just, just learned Premiere Pro uh, at my own pace and I didn't really watch any video guides. It was one of these things where if I got stuck on something I would search for how to do that particular thing rather than watch like some kind of course on how to how to use Premiere Pro. And because I started a fairly long time ago um, I've kind of devised my own ways of doing things and um, this this is something that I've just gotten extremely used to because I've edited for hundreds maybe thousands of hours now but that might not be like the optimal best way to do it. But I'm going to share with you what I do anyway. Um, obviously when it comes to editing 
over time, you realize that you're using basically the same tools over and over again. So um, you've got some tools on this side. Obviously, you've got your like selection tool, uh, you've got your razor tool, and you have your, your deleting tools. So what I decided to do was to basically assign them all a shortcut, like a keyboard shortcut, where they're all next to each other. And that way, I only need to press the same four or five keys, and that's pretty much my entire edit. So for me, um, what I use is I have a button for the selection tool, I have a button for the razor tool, I have a button for ripple delete, which uh, is basically, let's say, I make some cuts here, and I want to delete it, but normally if you delete it, it just stays like that. And that's, that's basically an extra click for me, because I have to do that, then I have to remove that. But if you ripple delete, uh, where is it? Then it automatically just it shifts everything along and then it's a much easier edit. So instead of using delete, I use ripple delete. So I've got a keyboard shortcut for that. And I've got a keyboard shortcut for zooming in and for zooming out. So literally it's, it's those five. I've assigned them from one to five. And depending on what I need, that's just what I do. So single handedly, uh, my hand basically doesn't move at all. It's just like the, the tips of my fingers that move between the different keys. And for me, that plus my mouse is enough to edit. I believe once you get to like, you know, you, you are a legit professional editor, I think they don't even really use mice in order to edit their videos. But for me, this is just how it's worked and I'm very much used to it. And I feel like my editing is quick and easy enough that I don't have uh, the need to change it. So at the start of the session, there's always some noise where I'm kind of shuffling around and um, I'm doing things. So I don't know. Let's listen to what this is. There you go, that's a wonderful sound of me drinking some water before I start. <clears throat> all of that kind of stuff. So all of this stuff is just like me kind of just waiting for the loading screen. Maybe I'm just like singing some stuff to myself or I'm, I don't know, I'm rapping some hip hop songs, something like that. You guys don't need to hear that, but this is clear. Like I know what this is from my own experience, but basically this is all trash. So we can remove that. And basically it's going to be constantly me flipping between the selection tool that you're seeing now. Then I've got the razor tool, which is here. Then I just click where I want to delete, switch back to this. I can select it. And then I press my ripple delete in order to get rid of it. So that's basically the, the pattern that you're going to be noticing uh, as I'm editing through here. So one thing that you've got to be careful of once you start editing is to do with audio. Now, because you're doing commentary, obviously you need to make sure that your voice is heard nice and clearly while you're talking and it isn't drowned out by uh, the game audio. So uh, this is something where I've already applied some audio gain. Well, I've applied some audio gain, which is negative. So I've made uh, the, the gaming track quieter. So I've made it minus eight here. Now this is good because when I'm actually talking, so let's just start here and have me talking. What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to this commentary playthrough of Horizon Zero Dawn. We find ourselves in... Okay, so here you can hear me pretty clearly, that's not a problem. But let's say, let's just do it for this little section to make it easier. Let's say I increase that back to, to zero, so this is what it looked like when it came in. What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to this commentary playthrough of... So you can still hear me clearly, but I mean, it's not as clear as it was before. And let's say, just for, for sake of argument, that we made it too high. What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to this commentary playthrough of Horizon Zero Dawn. So then obviously it's even worse. So basically I find a level which is uh, which will cover me for both general background noise situations or background music situations like this one, and situations where um, the audio will get loud through gameplay. So if there's gunfire, or if there's some intense music and that kind of stuff, because if you're constantly chopping and changing um, the audio, then it's just going to make your edits much longer. So depending on your recording software, depending on the game, uh, depending on your own microphone audio, you just go to audio gain and somewhere between minus eight and minus 14 tends to be a pretty good number for um, the game audio. Now that's great, but sometimes it can cause problems where the, the cutscene audio then becomes a bit too quiet. So because I'm silent through the cutscenes, then you have a bit of a discrepancy between how loud the cutscenes are and how loud the gameplay is. So let's have a quick listen. This is exactly the kind of place I expected to find you in silence. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's that. Now listen to, to my commentary audio. What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to this commentary playthrough. Bringing down the audio of the gameplay will cause your cutscenes to be a bit too quiet. So this is where I start to, to edit things in terms of making the cutscenes a little bit louder and just keeping the gameplay as it is. So here, this is obviously, this chunk here is clearly uh, some audio. So what you can do here, and what becomes very intuitive after a time, is to play around with this line that we have here in Premiere Pro. So this is basically um, your audio gain as a line. So from minus uh, infinity up to six, you can just, with one click, you can control the audio level of that entire track. So in that sense, it's pretty easy. Now what's good is that if you've applied like a, a minus eight or a minus 10 or a minus 12, just going back in and raising this up to the limit of six already fixes your problem. And your cutscene audio is back up to, to where it should be. And it sounds nice and full in your speakers or your headphones when you listen to it. So you can apply uh, everything with one click, but generally that's not a good idea because obviously now you've increased the, the audio for this part as well. And obviously that's not what you wanna do. So in order to isolate what you're doing, um, you have two options. There's the lazy option of doing this, where you just you just isolate it like that. Uh, with me, I've kind of gotten used to fading it a bit so that you have a more gradual and less noticeable shift in audio volume. So that's how I tend to do it. With that, you just press down the control key. So with that, you can select uh, different points along this line and then you can shift things up and down accordingly and you can create fades. So this is how you create audio fades uh, in your videos. So that is what I do for this. So now it sounds more like this. This is exactly the kind of place I expected to find you in silence. Thank you. It's one of many workshops I've constructed over the years. Okay, so I faded this one a little bit late, but it doesn't really matter too much. Basically, when it's time for the gameplay to kick in and it's time for me to commentate again, then I bring it back down from the plus six I have here down to the, the kind of mi middle level that I chose at the start of the session. So then it's just back to me again. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Welcome back to this commentary playthrough of Horizon Zero Dawn. So when it comes to audio, that's pretty much the most important thing that you need to, you need to be dealing with. Make sure that your commentary is heard nice and clearly and make sure that your cutscenes are also heard because it's hard to have both happening at the same time. Now, some of you guys that are experienced in this field will say to me, yeah, but there's a tool that will make uh, the game audio lower when you're speaking automatically during recording. And this is true. And it's something that I experimented with before. So it's a neat trick in the sense that you don't have to do anything in post-production. Uh, the, the, the software will recognize when your microphone audio is coming through and it will automatically bring down the volume of the game so that your voice is heard more clearly. I think this works really well for streaming. It's a really good idea for that. But again, like me, if you're working pre-recorded and you want like a, a more cleaner, more edited product, then it doesn't really work so well. And I'll explain why uh, a little bit later. So let's keep listening in a bit here and just see what's going on and what I need to edit during this session. We find ourselves inside where Gaia was housed before it decides to blow itself up in order to try and save basically the city. Okay, so what happens sometimes is I, I don't play a game for a little while, so it might be like a week, 10 days, two weeks, and a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn was recorded near the summertime uh, when I was more busy. So basically, I've tried to, to create an intro for the video, and I've, I kind of fluffed it. I wasn't happy with how I introduced the video and explained myself. So this is, is all trash, so I start again. What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to this comedy playthrough of Horizon Zero Dawn, and we find ourselves in one of the most important storyline places of the game. Okay, so this is like a more confident, more normal sounding intro, so I can get rid of this. And now, obviously, we've got this gap in between the two. So depending on what you want to do, you can either just do this, uh, ripple delete here, so that it just shifts along, and now, What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to this commentary playthrough of Horizon. I can do that, or if I want to move things around, I can select this entire intro here, because this is all just um, this is all just introductory comments, and I can shift it along to here when I first get started. So I'll move this back down. I've constructed over the years. 
What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to this comedy playthrough of Horizon Zero Dawn and we find ourselves in one of the most important storyline places of the game because this is where Gaia was, the AI that was basically in charge of bringing life back to Earth. So blah blah blah, now I just uh, I start my commentary run. Um, so what I will do, obviously we're not going to do the every single second of audio here, but I will literally listen to everything that I've said here. Uh, if there's something, so if you look at the, the waveforms here, you can see that sometimes even after noise reduction you will get these these little bits here so let's just listen for what they are uh, i'll solo this track so you don't have the game noise to interfere with it. extinction of life on earth so okay so there's some like you know lip smacking clicking sounds here it's something that it, it just depends how much you care about these things uh, i do so whenever i spot them i just get rid of them and i continue on maybe some of them are not even audible but after a time, it just becomes a reflex. When I see something like that in the timeline, I've got to get rid of it. Some of them are tiny. Like this one is just so small that I'll probably ignore this one. From I couldn't even hear that. From yeah, so I'll just leave that one alone. From bringing about extinction once again. So here, I think we've got some more dialogue coming up. Here, by the way, I forgot to bring it back down to minus eight. I applied the minus eight to bring it back down to zero, but not the correct one. There you go. For years, I tried to get through this hatch. So again, here, uh, the audio is too low. So if you look at on the right, you can see where the where the audio is peaking. For years, I tried to get through this hatch. So it's around minus eighteen. Now, from what I know, uh, minus twelve to minus six is a, is a good place to have for your dialogue. For your spoken word audio to be peaking so here this is all just dialogue you can you can tell from the waveforms so yes, i tried to get through this hatch so the plus six will just cover it i just made my two points here and i just dragged it up and there you go it's done now what you'll notice here is that you can see a big peak here now if i didn't edit my videos this is the kind of stuff that you would hear the way through would not force. there you go obviously you know when you're commentating, when you're going to talk for two hours, you're going to be making noises like that. So one of the main reasons I edit is to get rid of things like that. Mine, not yours. All right, here we go. When did you come here? Why aren't you here preparing Gaia? So after a time, you kind of learn to work ahead. So I won't listen to this, for example. There's no point in me listening to all of this. I just know it's there and I'll just skip ahead to here and I'll keep going. Now, obviously, I'm already looking ahead, so my eye is always looking down the timeline to see what's going on. So even though the, the playback is here right now, once I play this back, I'm already looking at this bit, and I know that there's some stuff here. So maybe I'm shuffling around, maybe I'm sipping water, maybe I'm just looking away, doing some other stuff, I don't know what it might be. But I already know that this is this bit here is cutscene or dialogue, and I know that I'm not saying anything here. So even while I'm here, so let me just go back. So in real time, it will look a little bit like this. It was mine, not yours. All right, here we go. When did you come here? Why aren't you here repairing Gaia? Makes sense. So it pretty much, I didn't realize that it. So like here, for example, um, I, as you can see, I tend to, to work ahead to, to speed up my edit. Now, normally here you'd say, okay, so there's a little bit of a break in dialogue here. Uh, you can bring the audio back down, but here you can just tell that the audio is not very loud at all. So there's no point wasting extra time bringing this down here and, and that down there. And all of these seconds add up over time. When you're editing for hours and hours and hours and hours, even an extra five minutes that you take per episode over the course of a series is going to be multiple hours. So it's always just best to, to kind of not overdo it when you're editing, at least from my perspective. So stuff like this, I, I just don't mind. I'll let it play back. Makes sense. So it pretty much, I didn't realize. So it doesn't affect how, how clear my audio is at all. I said it, it coincided with. It's not me. That's perfectly fair. <laughs> so again, I mean, a lot of these waveforms are quite telltale. So you know that this one, it, again, it's coinciding with uh, a piece of dialogue. So you know that that's going to be something that you don't need in your, in your video. So. You can already just preemptively delete it. You don't need to hear it back. You, you already know what it is. So here, hold on. Now he needs to use it as a weapon. 
sometimes, obviously, uh, when you're commentating, you react to things. And I said, what did I say? I said exactly here. Exactly. Now, I kind of jumped the gun a bit. I got a bit excited and I spoke over his final word here. So oh, he needs to use it as exactly. a weapon. Now, the problem with this is you can't hear me say exactly that clearly and I kind of talk over him. So what's the point? So I'll just move it along here to the gap to, to make it a little bit easier to listen to. Use it as a weapon. Exactly. So not only can you understand what I'm saying, I also don't interfere with what he's saying. So for me as a viewer, obviously, this is what I would prefer to, to be watching and listening to. So that's why I try to do the same uh, for you guys who are watching this. So let's move on. There's a lot of talking in this uh, in this episode. So some episodes will be quicker than others. Some episodes you'll edit in, in 10 minutes and some of them will take sometimes longer than the video, depending on what's there. So necessary to repair a guy. Now and then uh, what I'll do is, so this is not really like a, a spoken word. This is just a like an audio reaction to something. I sometimes like to leave stuff like this in. So I'm not talking over the, the audio, but you can hear me react in some way to it. So uh, I could be laughing. I could be, I don't know, sniggering. Um, sometimes it's nice to leave that in there if it's not interfering with, with the cutscene. So to repair guy. <laughs> So because it's not sometimes easy to hear, I'll, I'll deliberately put the audio up on these so that you can get my reaction sometimes. Necessary to repair guy. <laughs> So that one I'll leave in. But if I was trying to say something, or I reacted with a, with some spoken word to interfere with this. I'll probably just get rid of it. That would take years, and we're counting the time we have left by the hour. Okay, so I don't know how we're going to figure it all out, but we'll just have to see. It's okay. So that's the that's the general gist of it in that sense. And now I think oh, I was going to say I think the gameplay is beginning now, but I'm going to skip ahead. I'm not going to listen to any of this. This is just. For demonstration purposes anyway you are clear to proceed good old sobek okay so now like some more gameplay section is starting let's have a listen right search the ruins for the master override now yeah i was going to say there's a lot of tears here so so if we get rid of hades as well and then we let gaia come back then is that really the best idea for the long run i don't know So once again here, because this section of the gameplay is just so quiet, the, the background is very, very quiet, I, I didn't bother with bringing the, the audio level back down again, just left it alone. Gaia Prime Arrival Log. 10. 11 counting Gaia. Don't count your chicken embryos before they incubated, hon. She's still firing up. Be so yeah, lots of, lots of dialogue in this one. And so even when even if they look empty, I just remove them anyway. So there's this tiny little bit in the middle, but it's just easy to remove it all. Instead they're trying to be specific. The lights off at the <laughs> end. Food for thought, I'll <laughs> This sucks for So yeah, these are the kind of reactions I like to leave in. I think it adds a little bit more kind of a, a personal touch to it. Instead of being absolutely silent at all times, I think like the odd little kind of reaction here and there, I think it adds a little bit of flavor to, to the cutscenes. And you get a feel for for what I'm thinking and what I'm reacting to at that particular time. Uh, that is an interesting situation those two found themselves in, man. Okay, so it's not always easy to find specific exa examples, so I'll just I'll use this segment as an example. Um, this isn't where I'd normally use it, but just to get an idea of give you an idea of what I would do. Uh, sometimes when I'm playing games, uh, there'll be a bit where I get a little bit lost or I backtrack for something. Or I just, I waste unnecessary time where I don't comment on anything. So there's like a, I don't know, 30 second, 60 second, 2 minute, 3 minute, 10 minute window where I'm not really doing anything. So for those, uh, depending on how long it is, so if it's like a, a traversal thing, or sometimes if, if it's a menu use thing where, let's say I'm applying, uh, I don't know, some upgrades or something like that in a menu, that I, I want you guys to see the upgrades, but instead of it taking 5 minutes, it's better for it to take a minute then I'll kind of single out the, the area that I want to, to get on with and I will change the speed. So if you change the speed, I tend to go for 300 to 500 depending on what I'm doing. And I maintain the audio pitch as well so you don't get like the, the chipmunk kind of sound. So you do that and then ripple delete again. It's got to render out that audio. That's why it's red at the moment. So like, let's say I deemed this this traversal not that important and I just wanted to, to get through because I didn't say anything, then it will play back like this instead. I guess that's my way across. Okay, before I go there, 
And of course, you know, the, the one stage above this, if it's really completely unnecessary, then I'll just delete that entire segment and we'll have a jump. I guess that's my way across. Okay. It just, it totally depends on what that video needs and what's going on at the time. So I think there might be one here, actually. I don't know. It just totally depends. Okay, so something that you will see uh, quite regularly in my videos is that I will annotate things. So it could be to give you guys extra information. Uh, it could be to answer my own question, because obviously as I play through games sometimes I have questions about things. And sometimes the answers are obvious, sometimes they're not. So depending on the situation, I will put in an annotation to, to let you guys know some information that I want to pass on. For me, that's easier than, than going in and recording little pockets of audio and just being like, okay, for this section that I've highlighted here, I've got seven seconds to say, oh, this is actually what you need to do, or something like that. So instead of doing that, I'll just annotate instead. So for annotations, uh, it used to be a little bit easier, but now it's a little bit annoying on Premiere Pro. So this is something I probably need to look into. Um, so as you'll see here in the project file, there's already a few of them that I've used before, but I'll show you how, to, how I make my kind of original one, and then we'll go from there. So... Uh, with Premiere Pro nowadays, to create uh, a title, you have to go into New, and you have to go into Legacy Title. It never used to be like that before, but that's just how it is now. Um, this is all the same. And here, this is where you get to basically put your annotation in. So I use the Agency FB font now. Uh, it used to be Berlin Sans, I think, that I used, but now I use the bold Agency FB font. Uh, for 1080p content, I use font size 50. And then you just type, you just fail to type, you just type out whatever the hell you need. Uh, I center it, and to make it a little bit easier to read, um, I need to figure out how to get the, the properties and the tools to, to appear every time. There's a, I think there's a bit of a bug going on where every time you go in, uh, these two toolbars disappear for some reason. But that's a, that's a me problem, I'll have to figure that out. It's only been recent that I've run into it. Uh, what I do is I add an outer stroke, which is basically like a, an outline for it. And all I do is I change this number to about 50. And you can see that there's a subtle difference in how easy it is to read. And if you really want to, you can apply a shadow as well. I just make the opacity 100. And you, you can pretty much just leave it at that if you want. And then you just bring it in. So you've got the, the video track slash layer system. So um, it's always going to be whatever layer is highest up in your timeline. That's the one that's going to be visually uh, at the forefront of whatever you're doing. So let's say for whatever reason you did this, then your annotation is going to be invisible. So you have to make sure your annotation is always the highest um, layer in your project. So yeah, you just do that. And here you can just adjust however long you need it for. And then that's that. Power cells also good, I guess. And then just go from there. So let's say you need a second one. Uh, once you've already made one of these, all you have to do is right click, duplicate. Then you just go in and you change whatever you want to change. And then you can just shove your next annotation in and you're good to go. So that covers the, the annotation side of things. The other. Okay, so now it's time to have a look at one of the things that will require the most editing. And it's one of the reasons why I don't love uh, games where I have to do a lot of reading in terms of having to record them. So Final Fantasy VII is obviously the worst kind of game for this because there's no voice acting and you read literally everything. So not only is it a bit more tiring to, to record because you have to speak out loud and read everything out loud for so long, but also when you're in uh, editing, there is a lot more to edit and it does slow down your edits because you're about to see what happens when you have to read big chunks of text. So let's see what this data log sounds like and how bad a job I did with reading it. Okay. Last time I visited Prime was November of last year. Months, months. Yeah, so already I fluffed up this bit here. Uh, and obviously I need to get rid of that. So I select that, I get rid of it. Now I have to check the gap between that and the line before and see if it's See if it's too much. Last time I visited Prime was November of last year. Months since. So yes, it is too much. So now I have to, to kind of close up the gap here to make it flow more naturally. Okay. Last time I visited Prime was November of last year. Months since have been a blur. 
Flew out last night to oversee the installation of the central armature and the master override. You're welcome, Ted. Which was completed by 4.30. Yeah, I mean, that's all fine. Horizon Zero Dawn is one of those games where, because there's a lot of science involved and a lot of people who um, speak at a linguistically high level, a lot of these logs and stuff, they, they're quite complex to read and you're more prone to making mistakes than you would be to read stuff written in more kind of everyday language. So definitely wasn't easy in that sense. I've developed a habit of speaking to her before I sleep. Seems to be the only thing that calms me these days. So yeah, in general, I can read okay. Like I don't fluff everything, but over the course of an entire game like Horizon Zero Dawn, there's lots of bits where, especially because the data logs are so long that like once every couple of paragraphs or whatever, you're going to screw something up and that's going to create editing work. Forwarded the Odyssey message to the Alphas. Na Naoto. Yeah, so there you go. That, I screwed up that name. I probably screw it up in the version where I think I get it right as well. But here I was like, that's definitely wrong. Naoto replied. Naoto replied in. Naoto replied in less than a minute. With a. So yeah, there you go. That's the version where I deemed it good enough to continue. But obviously I got these fails in between. So just got to get rid of those. And to the Alphas. Naoto replied. In now, depending on how big the skip is, uh, sometimes you get the audio, uh, the game audio having a noticeable skip. For me, that's not a noticeable skip, so I wouldn't touch that, I'd continue on. But let's say for whatever reason, I'm not happy, there's, there's too much of a jump in the audio, then you can either put in like a, a fade. So if you put, type in cross, you can see these uh, cross fades for audio. Put one of those in, I tend to make it like 15, 16-ish frames. So put something like that in and then hit listen again. Less so it's, it's slightly like less noticeable, but if you're really like un unhappy with that as well, then you have to do a little bit more work. And I'll explain that as we move on. So we'll delete this for now. Keep going. In a minute with a poem, of course. The, bu the building of the ship by long. Okay, so here is a, is a mini screw up, but one that I don't have to shift anything around for, I think. With a poem, of course. The building of the ship by Longfellow, and it's long, and it's long, all right. Here again, it's. I think once you have your first fail, then you can't get into a rhythm again. I think reading out loud is one of these rhythm things where, um, you know, once you get flowing, then you can read like paragraphs without making a mistake. But you make that first mistake, and then they start coming back to back. It's not easy. Ship by Longfellow. And it's long, all right. So here, I feel like the, the gap's starting to expand out too much. The, the, I'm starting to lose the flow of, of what I'm reading. So I'll shift this along. Building of the ship by Longfellow. And it's long. So now I've got to close this bit up in the middle. The poem, of course. The building of the ship by Longfellow. Again, like, this is just totally like, depending on how I'm feeling at the time, whether I want to try and fix that or not. Poem, of course. The building of the ship by Long. Yeah, for me that's good enough. Longfellow, and it's long, all right. I didn't read all of it, but it seems to be seems to be about launching a ship rather. So there was a small fail there, but like that's small enough for me to, to ignore here. But it seems to be seems to be about launching a ship rather than building one. The stanza or couplet or whatever leapt out at me. This stanza or couplet or whatever leapt out at me. So yeah, this was like a really bad paragraph. Like I screwed this one up a lot. So if you thought I, I read everything perfectly every time i'm sorry to disappoint you but this is the reality this is the behind the scenes this is the truth rather than building one the stanza or couplet or whatever leapt out at me i don't know what i read wrong here hold on the stanza or cup i think i said the stanza the stanza or couplet or whatever leapt out at me this stanza yeah i think that and i, I think i didn't like the tone of how i read that as well so that's got to go rather than building one this stanza or couplet or whatever leapt out at me so I'll shift this back a little bit because it created a bit of a jump in the in the scrolling. Building one. This. So this one has a noticeable um, audio skip. So if you listen for it. So at this stage, I'm probably thinking I'm going to have to to fix this entire audio situation. So I'll I'll stop making fixes at this point and just make sure that I have my audio my commentary track in order and then I'll go back and fix the game audio once I'm done. Or couplet or whatever leapt out at me. It's into my hands. I'll count myself lucky. Until next time. Okay, so I've finished reading this section but the second paragraph um, had a few fails in it and I had to, to fix it up. So what I tend to do here is instead of having all of these little transitions,
because the audio here is just a single track, um, what I will do is I'll, I'll isolate that track. So I'll unlink these from the video, all of them. And then I'll get rid of all of this audio. So instead of having these like transitions and fades and all that bullshit, I'll just continue the track because it's just a, a very, because it's just a singular, um, quite monotone track. It, it just really doesn't matter. And if there's one thing I noticed that the plus six, I think is a bit too loud for the reading bits. So I'll bring that down close to normal and we'll go from there. So now we don't have to deal with any audio skips at all. And all I need to do is once I get to the end, I can kind of fade it back in. Hold on. So when does that menu music stop? About here. Fail save. This is a bit like, I worry about that alpha build of Apollo. So much knowledge, so few restraints and no fail saves. So what happens? So. Okay. So here is when I can kind of run it up to. So that's what I'll do. And you can, you can use your own voice to mask audio transition. So here there's going to be an audio transition really, because this is a different part of the track to this, but cause it's right on when I'm talking and I'm louder than the music, generally it's not that noticeable. So let's have a listen. So few restraints and no fail saves. So what happened to, to Odyssey? I think so there you go. You, you would not really have noticed that someone watching wouldn't be like, oh, that was a bad audio skip. So in that sense, it's absolutely fine. Okay. So I think in terms of the things I wanted to show you guys, what kind of things I look for, what I remove, uh, what I keep in, how I shuffle things around, that is pretty much all of the things I do during editing. And like I said, depending on uh, the content being played, um, the part of the game that we're in, how much reading there is, have I got a sore throat that day? Am I coughing a lot that day? So like obviously you've got loads of sections where I'm kind of making little bits of noise, etc then the, the, the editing time will differ. So it can be 30 minutes or it could be 45 minutes per 30 minute episode, depending on how things go. So that is a story. Um, I think that's about it. So basically I will edit till around 30 minutes. Um, obviously I won't stop it in the middle of a cut scene. So let's see. There's only one. I miss you. Wow. Some kind of way, I can't blame him. Okay, so this is somewhere where I could end the video, for example. And then obviously I'll get rid of all of this. Obviously I wouldn't have edited this already, but I'll just get rid of the rest of the track. Then uh, what I've started doing in like the last few months or so is for every series that I do, uh, I create an end screen. So just like reminding people if they can to like, if they enjoyed it, like like the video and subscribe and all that bullshit. Cause I don't like to say it verbally. I feel like it's a bit too intrusive. Uh, just having an end screen like this that, that lets people know about my social media and all that kind of stuff. I feel like it's a nice thing to have for each series. So uh, I let that go for about 20 seconds at the end. So something like that. And then just shove a cross dissolve. So again, if you type in cross, you'll get both the audio and the video one appearing in the same menu. So that's what I do. Shove that there. Wait, I can't blame him. And there you go. That will be the end of the video. So this entire video is now quote unquote complete. So 30 minutes and 30 seconds. For the render, I have certain templates that I use depending on what I'm uploading. So, cause this is a new PC, it's still not everything isn't fully optimized yet, but I'll give you guys a gist of what I'm doing. Um, H.264 is what you need anyway. And I, just for people starting out, I mean, the YouTube 1080p full HD is a good place to start anyway. And the frame rate here, I think I locked it to, to 30 for a different video, but here it's already gonna either automatically give you the frame rate that's used in your video anyway. If not, just match this to your input video frame rate. So it's 59.94 for what comes out of the Elgato. So put that in there. Uh, I always select render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. And here, if you have a graphics card, which most of you editing probably will, uh, obviously select that should be already selected. Now here is where I can do things a little bit differently depending on what I'm rendering. So um, if I'm doing 1080p 60 FPS footage, I don't do 16, I do 15. That's like my uh, benchmark for that. It brings the file size down a little bit and over the course of an entire series, you will save a little bit of time in rendering and uploading as well. So it's about 200 MB 
which if your internet is a little bit slow as well, even 200 MB is going to make a difference. So I would go with the, the lowest bit rate that you can get away with when you're uploading to YouTube. So if you're uploading a, let's say, 13 and you're personally happy with that quality, then just stick with 13. But for 60 FPS, you do need a higher bit rate. So I go with 15 for that particular series. And the rest of it should already be like, you shouldn't need to change anything around here. Uh, audio, I don't touch any of this, but you can just double check that uh, the bit rate is at the highest, which is 320 for this particular codec. So just go with that and you're good to go. So then I will render this out. Okay, so for lightning returns, because uh, that's the 30 FPS series, you can get away with something like 13 if you want, uh, depending on what you want to do. So you can either put 13 here or 14. I think that's a, that's a decent number. 13 to 14 should be absolutely fine. Um, if, you, if you don't mind, like if you've got the hard drive space, you don't mind the extra render time, or your uploads are blazing fast, then I would go for the highest bit rate that you're comfortable using. So uh, if, if, like me, your internet is a little bit challenged and it already takes you two hours to upload an, an episode, then try to, to conserve on the bit rate as long as you don't give up too much visual quality and you're happy with how your video looks once it's been uploaded. So that's the general rule of thumb, I would say. Um, but yeah, that's the settings that I have. And once you're happy with it, then what I would do is to, um, if you're okay with just a YouTube preset, then that's absolutely fine. You just need to select that anyway. But if you've made a few tweaks to it and you want to make it a little bit different. So the second you already click this, you notice that it's already changed the custom. So, um, you know, you don't have too much choice with that. Let's change the custom, um, maximum render quality, and let's say 14 for Final Fantasy 13 3. So then you can create a preset. Whoops. Then you can create a preset and you can call this something like 1080p um, 30 FPS. So you know that if your series is going to be uploaded in 30, this is the preset that you can use. And likewise, let's say for 60 FPS you want 15 or you do want the 16, then you just do that. And let's say you change to that. Then you can save that as 1080p 60 fps and then you're done so once you're here then all that will remain is to select one of your um, presets you'll notice that i've got a youtube 30 fps low quality one here so this one is for games like final fantasy 10 that's recorded on the emulator because that's quite a low quality uh, input anyway it's gameplay focused uh, i'm not putting in the cutscenes or the dialogue and that kind of thing and also the average episode length is much longer than my usual LPs. It's like 60 to 90 minutes per episode. So for that reason, uh, for that one, so let's say, let me show you guys how much difference it makes and why I would have a low quality preset as well. So let's say uh, the most recent episode I uploaded was an hour and 27 minutes for Final Fantasy X. So let's render it out. Let's pretend this is Final Fantasy X. When I come to the render, so let's go to the high quality 30 frames per second. You can see that I've almost got a 10 gig file. So a 10 gig file will still take a while to render even if you have a good CPU like mine. Uh, it will also, for me, the bigger problem outside of the rendering is that it will take a ton of time to upload this. I mean, uh, probably eight hours at least, eight to 10 hours maybe to upload this. So I, I genuinely just don't need that quality for that particular series. So. I will flip it to the low quality and I've saved about 30% uh, time in terms of the render and also with the uploading. So for low quality preset, uh, the, my bit rate is 10. And again, that's perfectly fine for the for a series like the Five Fantasy 10 P Birdman mod. If you guys check the video with that one, you'll see that it's absolutely fine. So there is pretty much no point rendering that series at 16 bit rate, for example, when you can get away with 10 and save yourself the disk space, uh, the render time, and the upload time. So just prepare your, your presets based on, on what you need to do. Uh, 4K is obviously going to be much, much more intensive. So <laughs> so yeah, it's it's demanding a 40 bit rate because it's four times the resolution. And that's already, that's a 25 gig file for a one and a half hour episode. So that's why if you want to get into 4K for your content, you're going to be you're going to, your hardware needs to be on point because it's going to take so much longer to render these out you're going to need so much more disk space to to store your videos and it's going to take so much longer to upload as well 
yeah, it's hardcore. When you move on to 4K, everything changes. So for me personally, uh, I'm probably going to wait a little while before moving to, to 4K consistently. Um, I don't have a PS4 Pro anyway, so I don't have a 4K capture for my PS4 content. But for PC series I'm going to make in the future, I'm going to be trying to, to move into 4K. And next year when The Last of Us 2 comes out and Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out, then hopefully I'll have a PS4 Pro and move on to uh, 4K footage for PlayStation footage as well. So until then, I'm going to be rocking the 1080, and for series like Final Fantasy X, I'm still going to be keeping it as 1080. But just know that 4K is going to come with its own uh, big-time requirements if you want to move to it. Okay, so that concludes my part two of how I make my videos in terms of the editing process and rendering and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the final part of this is going to be what happens once my video is rendered. So the upload process, uh, the title, the description, the thumbnail, and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully that'll be the final part of this mini-series, and you guys should have a really good idea of how I make my videos from start to finish. So thank you all for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. If it's the case that there's some aspect of the editing or the program or something that I didn't explain in enough detail, or you have any other questions, do let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to, to help you guys where I can. And I will see you guys for part three when I'm ready for it. So thank you all for watching. Take care.